Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I mean, so we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, some of the sort of things, you know, so maybe some of the issues or I mean, what, what you know, some of the, you, you mentioned the Twitter, you know, people <laughs> mentioning on that, which I don't know how representative of real life that is. But uh, what, what criticisms have you seen um, with these report that maybe some you agree with, maybe some that you don't? Well, there are people who want the, the earnings to be as low as possible to mm -hmm. further their own political agenda. Um, and mm -hmm. they say drivers earn $5 an hour. And the answer is, yeah, some drivers earn $5 an hour, but on average, mm -hmm. they don't. Um, and if they earn, if, I think if every driver earned $5 an hour, they would stop driving. Um, yeah. But I think, I think for me, one of the things that came out of this was the way in which people talked about that number of twenty three dollars and twenty five cents mm -hmm. and it's immediate and so if you remember from your math classes that means half the drivers earn more half the drivers earn less so yeah. one of the things that's weird about the data we saw and as i'm sure you saw in the report was that you know if you work a normal job at a starbucks or a mcdonald's the person sitting next to you earns about maybe 50 cents more, 50 cents less for exactly the mm. same job. Whereas the driver next to you could be earning $40 an hour when you're earning $9 an hour. And so what, what statisticians call the distribution was just enormous. So mm. we, can, we reported um, those medians, but really the story is in the graphs in the report that show the widespread of earnings. And for me, that was the real astonishing thing, just how different the earnings were for different drivers. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I will say that this part in a weird way kind of excited me because this is really kind of the crux of my whole business is that the more knowledge you have as a driver, the more insight you have, the more money you can make. And it's the reason, you know, sort of why I have the blog, the podcast, YouTube channel for drivers, why we have a course, why we have a book. And in surveys we've done, you know, we've actually seen that drivers with, I think, 2,000 rides or more earn $5 an hour more mm -hmm. than drivers with 500 rides or less, or at least they reported earning $5 an hour more. And I think that was exactly what I saw in your survey. And you actually mentioned it in the updated brief too, that you know there are some drivers in Seattle during this week that made over forty dollars an hour, and there are some that made under ten dollars an hour, which I think is I never realized that the split. You know, I thought it was maybe two x, maybe three x, but I mean that's a four x split. So a driver who you know sort of I, I guess what I would say is like a driver who sort of know, really knows what they're doing and kind of is driving the best times and the places and getting maybe the best bonuses or incentives or whatever versus the person who clearly doesn't know <laughs> what they're doing mm -hmm. or you know maybe is forced into driving those hours or can only work those hours, whatever the reasons are, there's a 4X difference. That's pretty amazing. That, that really stood out to me. And what's shocking too is that our earnings data from Uber and Lyft didn't include streaks or bonuses or any of that. So this hmm. is before people who apply that kind of knowledge as well. So, so this didn't include any of the weekly bonuses. I mean, Seattle no. is sort of a medium to large market. So it's not, you know, a market where drivers are super dependent on bonuses, but they definitely have, bon you know, weekly bonuses in the cities. Yeah. So we didn't have that um, mm -hmm. in the earnings. So for people who could do that, they, they probably earn more. Um, but yeah, it was, it was an astonishing difference. And hopefully in future reports, we'll have access to data that tells us driver tenure. You know, how mm -hmm. long have people yeah. been driving for? And I, that's exactly one of the things we want to investigate. Um, and not just, and this is another reason why it's so important to have data from both platforms, because the techniques for Uber will I'll probably also apply to techniques from Lyft. And so if you've been driving it, you yeah. know, a thousand <laughs> rides, it could be 500 on both or 200 on, or 50 on one and 950 on the other. So it, it's important to have data from both platforms to analyze that. Yeah. So I think maybe, you know, and kind of I'll ask you just a few more questions, but I, I would like to look at let's I mean, we can take the twenty three, twenty five dollar an hour, which was the median. And maybe we can just break that down because I know that in the report you provide, you know, different. I think you guys did do a really good job of providing, you know, based on your assumptions, you can kind of calculate all these different variations. So if people are interested in that, they can kind of go through and do that. But if we look at the twenty three, twenty five number, um, you know, how does that I guess, first off, I mean, that's earnings after expenses. Right. So what were the expenses in that case? So. So, so it's really important when you're thinking about these the driver's expenses, we think, is to break it into marginal costs and fixed costs. And this is just very okay. normal stuff that economists usually do. So a marginal cost would be something that costs you money every time you do an activity. So if I'm driving, 
I need to think about fuel and I need to think about the maintenance of the car and it's depreciation per mile um, and insurance if I'm driving it. And that costs, there's a marginal cost of that that I wouldn't mm. otherwise have um, unless I were doing the activity. And a fixed right. cost is, you know, whether or not you're doing the activity, you still have to pay for it, right? And so mm -hmm. a fixed cost would be um, owning the car. It would be buying, the, you know, owning the, owning the car, you know, in general. It would be um, having personal insurance. It would be a lot of the things we associate with the cost of a car. Um, so what we did was that for a very casual driver, so a lot of the other studies have started with the assumption that people are full-time drivers. And if you do that, mm -hmm. it makes sense to include fixed and marginal costs. But for a casual driver who's driving a few hours a week, it really doesn't make sense. If they are doing this, it's because they already have a car. Um, they mm -hmm. are taking the car they already have. Yeah, it's a sunk I think cost. I uh, agree with that. Yeah, and so they are driving a few more hours and they're thinking, how much does this cost me in fuel and maintenance and depreciation and insurance? And so those mm -hmm. are the costs we included for the drivers in Seattle who are casual, non-full-time drivers. And for the full-time drivers, we said, look, once someone's driving full-time, they are actually thinking about what kind of car to own. They're thinking about mm -hmm. buying a different car. They're thinking about... Um, those kinds of fixed costs. And so we include those fixed costs. Um, and really, in, in reality, it's a spectrum, right? So the guy who drives... And, and I mean, also, it's sort of the primary way that they're using that car, right? If right. they're doing full-time driving, they're going to be putting 1,000 miles a week on their car. It doesn't leave a whole lot of other miles. You know, maybe you drive 50, 100 miles personally. So 90% of the time, you're using that car for Uber and Lyft, right? Yeah. And this is a pretty normal way to think about business okay. expenses. Um, this is the yep, normal way you think about business expenses. Um, and so for full-time drivers, we actually had a different cost model. So for the 20 through 25, it's based on the average driver who's driving 10 hours a week, who is, um, you know, and that is just marginal costs. This is somebody who mm -hmm. is doing it. They are doing it. They already have a car. I mean, you're not buying a car and then driving it 10 hours a week. Got it. Right. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, but you are driving full time, you should include the cost of the car. And so what we did in our uh, study, which is a very normal economic technique, is we looked at the rental cost, uh, the market price rental cost. So what would it cost mm -hmm. to rent a car for a week? Um, and that gives you the most expensive minimum car to drive on a platform, um, mm -hmm. which if you think about it, you're like, oh yeah, that would be, the most expensive way to do this. Um, and it starts the before taxes and fees, it's $214 a week. And so mm -hmm. we started adding in all that stuff, the taxes and fees. We took out the maintenance. We took out the depreciation because that's part of what you're right. paying for, for a full-time uh, rental. Um, mm -hmm. And then when you do all that, it brings down the hourly earnings of a full-time driver to about $18. In, if it. you include only the time before rides, and then if you include all the wait time, it brings it down to seventeen forty an hour. So mm -hmm. it's lower. It's lower yeah. than that casual driver. And we wondered, in fact, if this is maybe why there are so few full-time drivers, that drivers mm -hmm. being rational are saying, well, actually, I'm making less money the more I do this, that there's that sweet spot yeah. where they make good money in the middle. So yeah. that's basically how we thought about that model. Got it. So that's helpful. So basically the 23, 25 an hour is sort of saying that the expense, you know, cal you know, number that we calculated to get to 23, 25 is kind of based off a of more of a marginal cost. Right. So and which I think I agree with. Right. You know, most people that are doing this casually already have a car and, you know, they already probably even have a cell phone. There might be, you know, very small amounts extra that they have to pay for data, but it's pretty, you know, small. Um, and then versus the full time drivers who actually, you know, when you do take more of a fixed uh, you know, cost approach, they're actually a lot lower, 17 to $18 an hour because cars are expensive, right? Yeah. So I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think that was probably one of the things that got lost in the headline. And what I would even in the headlines, what I would even say is, you know, a lot of the drivers that are sort of, you know, more pro on the labor side and pro employee and sort of all of that, you know, I think they tend to be more in the full time driver camp because they're, you know, frankly, like you can see here, even with your numbers, like the job is $5 an hour less, five to $6 an hour less attractive to them as a full-time driver, right?